it's D-U-E, you tell I see you by this point, you're reading my mind, it's time for football, we bout to keep this thing moving, I'm bout it, you're with it, let's do it, we gon' make this thing official, you heard me, if you're the best then let's prove it, the goal is set to have a team become a unit, man, we bout to keep this thing moving, I'm bout it, you're with it, let's do it, we gon' make this thing official, you heard me, if you're the best then let's prove it, the goal is set to have a team become a unit, yeah. Welcome to Football Game Plan's NFL All 32 Show. I am Emery Hunt, the czar of the playbook, and today we're going to take a look at the Los Angeles Chargers, and we're going to break down their 2020 NFL season. But before we get things kicked off, let's take a look at some of the key storylines heading into the year as we go into our four-minute offense. For 16 years, Phillip Rivers was the Chargers QB. He went from quarterback of the future to future Hall of Famer to now quarterback of the past. Rivers finished his career with the organization throwing for over 59,000 yards, 397 touchdowns, 27 fourth quarter comebacks, and 32 game winning drives. He even led the Chargers to the playoffs six times, including a gutsy AFC title game performance. For the better part of a decade and a half, the Charger faithful knew that number 17 would be their quarterback under center, and now that transition to someone else has begun. Tyrod Taylor is the quarterback of the present with rookie first round pick Justin Herbert out of Oregon tabbed as a quarterback of the future. Despite constant change being the most consistent thing about pro football, it still will look weird not seeing Rivers in a Chargers uniform this upcoming fall. I touched on it just a moment ago with Justin Herbert, the rookie first round pick out of Oregon, being the Chargers quarterback of the future. Well, with that being the case, the next move is to wonder or speculate what's the plan for the former Oregon Duck. Now, Herbert played a lot of football in college and comes into the league with a ton of game experience. However, from everything that has been said and written about him with regards to the Chargers is that they want him to sit the entire season, get further acclimated to the offense before letting him openly compete for the job in 2021. And we all know what's said and what's done are two different things in regards to the NFL and the quarterback position. And if Herbert is able to put his best foot forward this training camp, and if Tyrod Taylor starts to struggle midway during the season, then the plan for 2021 will get expedited to late 2020. Another area that experienced a bit of transition was the offensive line. Los Angeles made a splash move this offseason by trading their starting left tackle Russell Okung to the Carolina Panthers for starting guard Trey Turner. Now, many view Turner as the Panthers' best offensive lineman, and it looks like a win for the Bolts in that regard. They also went out and signed Brian Bulaga in free agency to man the vacated left tackle role by Okung. With the young Sam Tevy being penciled in as the starter at right tackle, and with the amount of movement going on, Along with the COVID-19 taking away valuable practice time in OTAs and minicamps, it'll be interesting to see how quickly all of the moving parts are able to gel together and form a cohesive unit. Also in splash free agency news, the Chargers were able to sign the veteran corner Chris Harris Jr., who was a longtime nemesis with the division rival Denver Broncos. Harris was a major part of the no-fly zone out there in Denver and joins a group in Los Angeles that's hoping to recreate that same cachet. Harris is a four-time Pro Bowler that has made first-team All-Pro once in his career and still has a lot of stellar play left in his game and makes the Chargers already strong secondary even stronger and arguably the best in the division. Tyrod Taylor enters this season slated to be the Chargers starting quarterback and what's constantly misunderstood about Taylor's game is that he's a hyper-efficient passer and one whose athleticism helps aid the run game. He also does a really good job of protecting the football. He has been a pro bowler and has also led a team to the playoffs before in his career, so he's the perfect quarterback to help stabilize an offense that's in transition from a legend to a quarterback in waiting. Now, Taylor understands the dynamic of this situation and is looking to make the most of it like Drew Brees did when he was put in the same spot over 15 years ago when a team drafted Phillip Rivers very high in the first round. And Justin Herbert is in a good situation to both learn the system and pick the brand of Taylor, who has definitely seen and experienced a lot in his career. Herbert checks off the boxes for height, athleticism, and arm strength, but where you want to see growth in his game whenever he gets the opportunity to play is within the situational football department. Unfortunately, without a preseason, we in the media won't get a chance to see much of that this summer. The Chargers will look to Austin Eckler to be the feature guy in the backfield. Maybe featured is a bit of a strong word, but they do expect to use him more often this season than years previous. He's a dynamic threat out of the backfield in the passing game, but now assuming the lead role as the primary ball carrier could be putting him in a situation not conducive to maximizing his skill set, which is why Los Angeles will also rely on Justin Jackson, 
and rookie Joshua Kelly out of UCLA to shoulder some of that responsibility. Now, Jackson is a solid player who has proven over the course of his three-year career that he is capable of stepping in and keeping his run game on pace, while Kelly is coming off of an underrated career at UCLA and a strong week of work at the Reese's Senior Bowl. And it seems as if the Chargers will split the difference in the backfield with Eckler getting more of a prominent role, and we'll see if that's the right formula for this offense to have success in the backfield this upcoming season. On the perimeter, the Chargers have two studs at wide receiver in Keenan Allen and Mike Williams. Allen is coming off of three straight 1,100-yard-plus seasons and three straight Pro Bowl appearances. He should be in the conversation of the best receiver in football. At worst, he should be in your top two for best route runner in the NFL. Mike Williams broke out last season, cracking the 1,000-yard barrier for the first time in his career. And although he only got into the end zone twice, he still found a way to lead the league in yards per catch with an impressive 20.4 average. I don't foresee any drop off from these two guys with Taylor at the helm. Now, there is going to be a battle for the third receiver spot on the team. The Chargers do have some solid options with Jason Moore and Jalen Guyton, both of who saw some time last season, but it's two rookies that I'm excited about in Joe Reed out of Virginia and KJ Hill out of Ohio State. Reed helps him out in the return game, but also gives them a physical receiver that's capable of playing inside in the slot. And Hill is one of the more savvy route runners to come out of the draft class, having the nuance to consistently work himself open underneath. Now at tight end, Hunter Henry is one of the better young targets in the game. He just has to make sure to stay healthy as he's had some injury issues throughout his short career. He was fourth on the team in receiving and appears to be one of Taylor's favorite targets in the passing game. Virgil Green gives them good stability in line as a blocker, but a second receiving option could come from former XFL star Donald Parham out of Stetson, who saw a breakout of sorts in that spring league, displaying the skills to make him a vertical stretch option in the passing game. When looking at the Chargers offensive line, we'll start in the middle as they welcome back Mike Pouncey from an injury that sidelined him for the bulk of the season. His return to full strength is critical. Alongside him is Dan Feeney, who flashed brilliance at times and is working toward flatlining his game. He started all 16 games last year and gives him at least some stability on the interior. With newcomers Brian Bulaga starting at left tackle is a very good thing as he still has more upside than the departing Russell Okung. So essentially, LA got an upgrade at the position. They also got an upgrade at right guard with Trey Turner, who came over in that trade that we talked about earlier. He is a good all-around player that gives them some consistency at the position. At right tackle is where a lot of watchful eyes will be this season. Sam Tebby will get first crack at the job after he saw a lot of experience there last season as a starter. He'll have to hold off second-year player Trey Pipkins, who also saw starts last season for that job. Now, he has tremendous upside and seems to have acclimated himself to the pro game after making that jump from Division II, Sioux Falls. He and fellow small college tackle Trent Scott out of Grambling do give L.A., two developmental talents that got their feet wet as rookies and Scott ended up starting 10 games last year and helped strengthen the depth on the outside. The hope is that they can get a full season out of Forrest Lamp as he hasn't been able to stay healthy since entering the league in 2018. Center Scott Keesenberry proved to be a valuable asset last year when he had to step in and start in place of an injured Mike Pouncey. And speaking of depth, I also like what they have in Ryan Groy and also Storm Norton, who, in my opinion, was the best offensive tackle in the XFL earlier in the spring. The Chargers defensive line is flat out dangerous. Star defensive end Joey Bosa, fresh off of a new contract, is expected to be the cornerstone of this unit for years to come. Last season, both he and fellow edge mate Melvin Ingram combined for 18 and a half sacks, 29 TFLs, and 43 quarterback hits. Both made the Pro Bowl last year and are arguably the best pass rushing duo in the division. In free agency, they went out and added Linville Joseph, who was excellent in Minnesota the last six seasons. He's still a very good run defender that shows an ability to collapse a pocket as well. And I would expect to see both Justin Jones and Jerry Tillery continue to grow and blossom into their roles. Jones was impressive last season, and the club is expecting Tillery to take a major step forward this year after battling with inconsistencies as a rookie. Defensive end Isaac Rochelle gives them capable depth and keep an eye out for undrafted rookie free agent Joe Gaziano out of Northwestern. He finished his career as the all-time sack leader at Northwestern in history with 30 sacks and had 48 and a half TFLs in his collegiate career. I actually think the Chargers have an impressive group of linebackers. Rookie Kenneth Murray out of Oklahoma graded out as our top inside backer in draft class because of his speed, acceleration to the ball carrier, 
and he has the blitzing and pursuit skills to hit the ground running. Uchenna Nwosu gives them another pass rushing presence at the second level. He's a valuable player to have. His value to me is like that of Devin Kennard. You can't have enough of those type guys on your team. And with guys like Drew Tranquil and Kaiser White, you get speedy matchup type backers that can serve in a multitude of roles. It'll be hard to keep both guys off the field for an extended time this season. And if Denzel Perriman can stay healthy, he figures to see a lot of playing time as well. At this juncture of his career, he's probably best suited to play in a situational role just to keep him healthy for a full 16-game season. They also signed Nick Vigil this offseason from the Cincinnati Bengals where he was coming off his best season as a pro with 111 tackles. He will push for a starting role on the outside. And I think we'll see second-year player Emek Ibule take a step forward this year and find a way into the defensive rotation after being primarily a special teamer last year. He's got the athletic skills to help out in coverage. Another strength on his Chargers defense is the secondary. We spoke earlier about how much of an impact Chris Harris Jr. makes on the outside, giving them a lockdown corner with ball skills, but teaming him up with Casey Hayward Jr., who is one of the steady, dependable players at the position, just gives them a strong duo out there on the corners. Desmond King, I thought, really blossomed last year from a coverage standpoint. We knew about his impact as a special teamer, but last season I felt like we saw the same Desmond King that we saw out there at Iowa just being always around the football. And I like how Brandon Faison and Michael Davis gives them very good depth at the position as well. Davis started 12 games last year and will still have a major role, I believe, despite not being a starter. Now at safety, Derwin James is back in the mix after missing the bulk of last season with the foot injury. He's a game breaker that makes a ton of plays on both ends of defense. His ability was sorely missed on the back end last season. Rayshon Jenkins was solid last year, starting all season long for the first time in his career because of injuries and has earned the trust of the staff to be a significant piece of the puzzle in 2020. But he will get a strong push from second year player Nasir Adderley, who has A plus athleticism as well as versatility. He was a highly touted pick last year who dealt with an injury that severely limited his opportunities last season. But rookie Alohi Gilman is another one of these players you want to watch for. He's a solid zone defender and will work himself into the rotation this year, but will more than likely star on special teams initially to start the season. Football Game Plan is brought to you in part by Ninth and Lux. Visit the website ninthandlux.com and check out the clothing gallery. Nesby Phipps, art, life, entertainment. Nesbyphipps.com. Grind It Out Fitness. Visit the website grinditoutfitness.com and download the app. Football Game Plan is brought to you in part by Financial Coaching LLC, Investment, Retirement, Security. Stewardship Credit, Financial Growth is in your hands. StewardshipCredit.com. Adrian Marie Photo, Photographer, Writer, Management. Adrian Marie Photography.com. Lock Multimedia. Be sure to order your copy of the Go-Go Offense by Coach Brennan Marion on footballgameplan.com slash go-go offense. Coach Marion goes through the ins and outs of his explosive offense, one that's tearing up the college football field and putting a lot of points on the scoreboard. Again, you can order your copy at footballgameplan.com slash go-go offense. With a quick flash of the XFL burned out due to the pandemic, I think many people forgot how excellent Donald Parham was during those five weeks of the season. He'll remind folks about that this summer and etch his name into the fall plans for this offense. Defensively, I think both Kaiser White and undrafted free agent Joe Gaziano will surprise some this summer. White played much better last season, and I think he's primed for a breakout year. And we talked earlier about Gaziano's resume at Northwestern. Every time you popped on the film, he was always making plays or causing disruption. K.J. Hill played like a seasoned vet at Ohio State and his mastery of the underneath passing game will afford him some opportunities this season and he'll capitalize. And Kenneth Murray will be as good as advertised and will find himself on many 
all rookie teams by season's end. Austin Eckler is the biggest X factor on offense, in my opinion. He's getting feature back treatment this year, and all eyes will be on him to see if he can handle the additional responsibilities that come along with it. And I went with Nasir Adderley for the defensive X factor. He was drafted to be essentially the co pilot to Derwin James, and if he's able to stay healthy, his athleticism and matchup capability will help strengthen the back end significantly. Look for Sam Tevy to have a breakout season and solidify his spot on the right side. He gained confidence last year. I think that'll help him get off to a great start to the season and carry it out throughout the rest of 2020. I also believe Jerry Tillery will find the consistency within this game and start to play with that same sense of urgency that we saw from him back at Notre Dame. He has a chance to really help this defensive line in a big way this year with his ability to rush the passer from the interior. A big reason for optimism for the Chargers this year is the fact that their defense is very strong at all three levels of the field. They're athletic, they're aggressive, they can match up across the board. This defense should be a top five defense this year. Also, Tyrod Taylor's efficiency is something that can help stabilize the offense. If you're efficient on offense, you keep the offense on pace, you're excelling in situational football, you're going to play a lot of winning football this upcoming season and they do have a strong special teams group i love what they have in both their kicker and punter situation the return game is excellent there's a lot of reasons to be optimistic about the chargers in 2020. The biggest cause for concern for me would be if that running game sputters. If this committee approach that they're going with, with Austin Eckler leading the way, doesn't pan out like they expect it to be, it could be a problem for their offense this upcoming year. What also could be an issue is if their offensive line remains a question mark. I know this has been some sort of contention for the Chargers for quite some time, but if they haven't found the right combinations up front along the offensive line, breaking in a new quarterback, it could be a problem offensively for the season. The road to the Super Bowl for the Chargers goes as follows. If their run game gets into the top 10, you talk about a guy like Austin Eckler that can be a sort of a game breaker, a mobile quarterback in Tyrod Taylor that can help aid the run game. If their run game is able to get into the top 10, they could be a problem offensively. And if their healthy defense stays healthy and dominates like you expect it to be, like it looks like it will dominate on paper, this team can go as far as they want to. And if Tyrod Taylor blossoms into a stud, I alluded to it earlier, if he's able to put together the same type of season we saw from Drew Brees when he was faced with the same situation of keeping a young quarterback first round pick on the side, if he can do that, this team can find themselves going to the Super Bowl. I have the Chargers finishing fourth in the AFC West. I like the defense of this team. I think this team can have a winning season despite finishing fourth. This division to me would look a lot like the NFC West. We had a team like Los Angeles. They talk about the Rams finishing in third place with a 9-7 record. I do see the Chargers having a winning season or at least a 500 season. What could push them into the playoffs would be the questions that will have to get answered. Can their offense really get up to speed without the, the time that it's needed to really build that cohesive unit? I'm talking about their offensive line, this newfound run game, breaking in a new quarterback. All of those questions I have about the Chargers is why I have them finishing fourth. But their defense, on defense alone, they would be first. But I do see this team being competitive, having a winning season, but just not enough to really push forward up the depth chart, so to speak, in the AFC West. So that's it for this edition of Football Game Plans NFL All 32. I am Emery Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Be sure to follow me on all of my social media accounts. And don't forget to check out and subscribe to the Football Game Plan Network located at youtube.com slash football game plan. Also subscribe on iTunes to Football Game Plan Podcast and leave us a five-star rating. And keep it locked here on our Football Game Plan YouTube channel as we will have tons more of Los Angeles Chargers video content coming down the pike. It's D U E U tell I see you by this point you read my mind it's time for football we about to keep this thing moving I'm about it you're with it let's do it we going to make this thing official you heard me if you're the best then let's prove it the goal is set the how the team become a unit man we about to keep this thing moving I'm about it you're with it let's do it we going to make this thing official you heard me if you're the best then let's prove it the goal is set the how the team become a unit yeah